Hello, my name is Monika and I joined the Biognosis support team in May 2020. Today I'm going to introduce you to the implementation of the ion mobility data processing in Spectronaut. I will show you how Spectronaut supports ion mobility data from different vendors, as well as new graphs in Spectronaut that are dedicated to ion mobility data visualization. Firstly, let me explain why we would like to focus on ion mobility. In classical proteomics, we deal with three-dimensional data, mass to charge ratio, retention time, and peak intensity. Ion mobility introduces another level of separation to that matrix, allowing even deeper proteome coverage within the same acquisition time. Our Spectronaut software is supporting DIA analysis of data acquired with ion mobility annotation, such as DIA passive by Broker and HDMSE by Waters, as well as Thermofames Pro, where ion mobility is used as a filter with single or multiple compensation voltage values. Let me start with ion mobility, which is used as fourth dimension for ion separation. Such a solution is offered by Broker while using DIA passive, and by Waters while using HDMSE acquisition. That additional ion mobility dimension is what provides the possibility to perform separation of signals from the ions with very similar properties, which can't otherwise be separated in a three-dimensional approach. In order to analyze data acquired with ion mobility dimension in a library-based approach, the library should be annotated with ion mobility dimension. Spectronaut supports this via its built-in database search engine, Pulsar. Pulsar is characterized by the fast processing of the passive data. A two-hour run of passive or DIA passive data can be processed in just over one hour for library generation with a modern workstation. Amongst the search engines that can process passive data, Pulsar also gives the best identifications in our experience. For example, it creates a library with 7,000 protein groups and 65,000 peptides from 100 ms ramp time runs published by Florian Meyer and colleagues, which is 18% more at the protein level than the next best search engine. As I previously mentioned, unique to Pulsar, it can also directly search DIA passive runs or HDMSE runs. Once you have generated an appropriate library, you can perform ion mobility based DIA extraction. Generally, settings you would need to choose for this step do not differ from the settings you would choose for the experiment without ion mobility. The only new setting that is ion mobility specific is extracted ion chromatogram ion mobility extraction window. As a default, you would set it to dynamic, which means Spectronaut will dynamically adjust the XIC window in ion mobility dependent manner, based on a large sample set during calibration. If needed, a correction factor can be applied. For example, a factor of 2 would mean that you want to use 2 times the window that Spectronaut suggests. The default settings are recommended for most applications. I would like to underline here that alternatively, you can perform a direct DIA analysis of your ion mobility DIA runs, which means no library has to be generated. For the technologies applying ion mobility as dimension, a number of graphical visualizations are available in Spectronaut. And I would like to show you now what they are referring to and what you could read from them. The ion mobility calibration plot shows the empirical ion mobility as a function of the ion mobility values in the library. IRT peptides are marked with red color. Secondly, you can visualize the ion mobility extraction width. As you probably remember, I was showing you an option to select how you want to perform XIC extraction in the ion mobility dimension when we were talking about the DIA extraction. The ion mobility extraction with plot shows the difference between predicted and measured ion mobility in function of ion mobility value. In blue color, you could see the extraction window that was applied for your data. Finally, you can visualize the ion mobility overview plot. It shows you the ion mobility dimension in function of m over z values. The red line shows consecutive DIA boxes. 
Their overlay with a registered MS1 signal could be used for DIA method optimization and validation. Now, I would like to show you how you can analyze data acquired with DIA FAMES, a technology proposed by Thermo. In FAMES, ion mobility is used as an ion filter before their separation in the M over Z dimension. You can regulate FAMES filters by applying chosen compensation voltage, CV, either single CV value for the whole acquisition or multi-CV values changing sequentially through the whole acquisition time. FAMES technology allows to remove the contaminants which share features similar to peptide ions. As a result, ions entering the mass spectrometer are cleaner and that leads to deeper proton coverage within the same acquisition time. Spectronaut supports libraries generated in Biognosis Search Engine, Pulsar, for single and multi-CV FAMES filter, both applied with DDA or DIA acquisition. When the multi-CV FAMES is applied for the DIA analysis, then the library should also have CV annotation. Exceptionally, for single CV FAMES, one can also use classical libraries without application of FAMES technology. Lastly, Generation of FAMES DDA spectral libraries is also possible using Proteome Discoverer. Like for the other ion mobility technologies, analysis of FAMES DIA data is possible as well by direct DIA approach, which means no library has to be generated. Spectronaut will deal automatically with multi-CV data on both library generation level and extraction of DIA data level. The graphical output in the software doesn't differ much from analysis without FAMES application. As you can see, you may scroll down the panel menu to visualize, among others, RT, MS1 or MS2 calibrations. When a method with multi-CVs is applied, you can visualize signals acquired for different CVs in the total ion chromatogram graph. The tick signals acquired for different CVs are presented with different line colors. The same applies to the base peak chromatogram. We could see that application of different CVs not only removes contaminants from the sample, but also leads to the separation of ions, therefore leading to deeper proteome coverage. If you like this tutorial and find it helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. You can follow our future tutorials by subscribing to our Biognosis YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.